Joseph Akable joins us now via Zoom for a detailed conversation on this subject. Joseph, very good evening to you. Thank you for your time. To start with, would want you to talk about the bargain for a 20% um, you know, interest from the investors and the $40,000 that the Minister of State, Charles Dubois-Hain, received. What was the conclusion of the OSP? And so as far as the OSP is concerned in respect of that particular matter, uh, he makes the point that during the interrogation when they engaged uh, Charles Edubwain, he had indicated that uh, the payment of that amount he has, had accepted it simply uh, because he wanted to be nice to the in investors. Now the OSP holds the view that uh, this claim was very thin and that the suggestion of the payment and the acceptance of that particular payment was quite reckless. He says this is especially reckless because the vice president was unaware of the business he was conducting and he had not been taxed by the vice president to demand money of whatever description on his behalf. So the OSP says all the indices point to the conclusion that Mr. Dubois' principal motivation was his own personal gain, even though he intimated to the supposed shake that he was driven by the potential developmental benefits of the proposed investment. And so the conclusion in that respect is that his conduct was outrightly improper and he exhibited a lack of sound judgment. Mm. And uh, the report also touches on what it says is um, the conduct which the OSP says amounted to influence spreading. But he also pointed out that he cannot do much about it. What exactly does that say? So first, he defines what in his view, constitutes influence uh, uh, peddling. And he says, this is the practice of using one's influence or connections in public office or with uh, persons in public office to obtain favors or prefer preferential uh, treatment for oneself or for another person, usually in return for money or for payment. And so he explains that these are acts that have not been specifically prohibited in Ghana's uh, legal system as crimes per se even though they are generally gravely frowned upon and punishable as crimes in some other jurisdictions. And so the reason why it's considered problematic is because a lot of people believe they are closely associated with corruption offenses like using public office for profit, and they also form the building blocks of general corruption. But unfortunately, he says there are no laws in Ghana that criminalizes that conduct, which means that in terms of the investigation that has been conducted, there's no actionable basis to take the matter up to court against Charles Edubwine at this point in time. You recall the La Bianca matter where a member of the Council of State's company had also been involved. The OSP in that particular case also investigated the matter of influence spending and subsequently disallowed uh, the tax exemption that had been granted. But in that instance, he managed to recover that amount of money from the said company. Right. And maybe finally, before we, you take leave of us, um, Joseph, uh, is this the end of the matter regarding this particular subject? At this stage, he has directed a closure of the investigation, but there's an interesting line uh, where the OSP makes the point that uh, as it stands now, there's no actual criminal prohibition. On that recording, the strike prosecutor directs the closure at this time of the investigation in respect of the allegations, but it leaves the option that the investigation may be reopened should the circumstances and further facts so dictate. And so the conclusion now is that Charles Edouard is no longer under investigation, but in the event the OSP finds some evidence that places him within the ambit of Ghana's laws and the OSP's act, then there may be further investigation and possible prosecution. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Joseph Akable, who uh, has been digging into the OSP's l latest uh, report on investigations of um, corruption and corruption-related uh, allegations that were leveled against Charles Dubois-Hain. And he has come out concluding that he cannot prosecute him.